Okay, I've been learning a lot as I, as I do this process and I think I found a way to make this easier to instruct and easier to understand um, and just more efficient as we move forward. Uh, the first thing that I want you to do is I'm going to provide you with this front view, side view, and back view of, what, of the Koopa Troopa in this case, but whenever you sculpt anything you can't always get it, but try to get this this front view, side view, back view, and the other side view. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some paper to create uh, a guide. You'll see how we're going to use it shortly. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the front view and we're going to draw one of the side views. And it's just the outline. So I chose this because I thought it would be pretty simple and you don't have to really worry about you know it being perfect or anything and just draw the outline so we're gonna draw the outline try to keep it as symmetrical as possible Don't worry if you overdo it or underdo it, you just draw it correct. So this little bit, just don't even worry about it. And you'll see why in the next step. That's the front, and we also want to draw the side over here. Just the outline. I'll try to line it up so the curves match up. Try to match it up so if this is the top of the nose, the top of the nose also lines up over here. Don't worry about making the lines messy.
that sets us up for the next step. The next step just involves cutting these out and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut them out off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so my outlines are cut out. And the next step is going to be to get some cardboard. Yeah, we're going to have to get some cardboard and our outline is going to serve as a stencil. We're going to trace this out. Uh, leave the neck a little bit longer. So extend the neck a bit, maybe by an inch. And we're going to do the same thing for the side view. Now I've outlined the front view and the side view on cardboard. Now I'm going to cut it out. It may be a bit tricky to cut it out. So obviously don't try to cut it all the way out like this. You're not going to be able to. What I would do is just cut into it right up until the line and then you can start taking chunks out of it. Kind of like that. And that's going to give you a much better angle over here. And you can start just cutting pieces off of it. And then slowly getting to your line. A cardboard can be a bit tricky to cut and I'll provide these same type of scissors for you if you don't have a scissors, a pair of scissors even though it was on your materials list. Like this angle would be a little bit tricky so instead of trying to get into it and screwing up the cardboard I'm just going to cut it from the top here and I'm just going to pull that out. And you cut both of them so you keep them nice and, and strong, the cardboard. Now we have our cardboard cutouts and we're going to take the front view and we're going to cut right up along the middle as close as you can get it to the middle and it's going to bend a little bit, that's fine. We are going to cut that all the way up to right around here, close to the eye, you don't want to cut through it. But you want to get really close. All right. And then we need to get our hot glue gun ready. Because we're going to combine this, these two, like this. And that's going to give you a pretty solid. Uh, skeleton. Okay, I just broke it. No big deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to glue it to the right to the side right here from the top. Let me go get some glue sticks. Be right back. You guys already know you should apply this fast. Don't worry about it being or looking messy. And let's do this quickly, right from the top. Try to get it centered in the middle as much as possible. Start preparing the other side. Just line that up as much as possible and glue it on.
Right. And now you have a good base to add your paper, which is what we're going to do. All right, next step, we're gonna be adding some of the paper to this, but first we gotta cut off the bottom so it's even, and hopefully it will stand. Let's see. And that stands wonderfully. All right, I feel much more confident this way than the way that you guys saw me do it in class. That's why I experimented in class. And I think this is gonna come together nicely. Um, the very least, we're gonna learn something here. And we could still manipulate this if we need to, and we will. Okay, first thing we're gonna work on is assembling the, the nose, whatever, the beak. And you could start that like this. I'm not gonna be, I don't think I'll be talking too much throughout this video. A lot of this I've been telling you guys is just based on, you know, intuition, following your gut. So let's start with that. You should cut this into a point. Try to keep it symmetrical. Symmetrical means the same on both sides. Okay, that's the first thing you should do. With our original drawing right here, we're gonna try to create uh, the circumference of the nose. And you can shape it out. So it's more or less like that. So you're gonna glue that together. Let's cut off the excess here. And now we take our cardboard model and we're gonna try to put that on there. Uh, you wanna make sure that it doesn't go too high up because we still need a little space here for the, the bottom beak or whatever it is um, and ours right now is just looking a little bit longer than the reference and that's fine at least right now we have some building blocks so if we wanted to later we could make it wider but I'm assuming these Koopa Troopers they're not all the same you know so I'll add a little bit of glue here and we're just gonna stick that on right there as a building block And then right here, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue as well. And we're just gonna stick that on. Try to make sure that it's even before it finalizes. Uh, that's pretty good. So um, right now we're going to we're gonna start extending um, pieces here just to solidify this a bit. Maybe we should do it round first. Yeah, let's do it round so it keeps the round shape and then um, we can work on top of that.
When you do this, you don't want to glue the middle. You glue the middle last because uh, once you put a, a piece of glue there, it's going to change the shape of it and it's going to be less round. And we're going to cut off extra. Let me just think because I'm making this one up as I go along like you will have to as well with a lot of projects that don't have a step by step and let me just think about what we're going to do next okay I've decided what we should do next and these cheeks are a bit puffy so what we're going to do is we're going to fold one of these so we're going to fold it like this and then we're going to start to bend it here and we're going to put that inside of here and we're going to curve it just like this and that's going to give us the effect of a puffy cheek and we might actually be able to go all the way around with that but I'm not going to I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it right here so I'm only gonna cut it to be that long to try to get these puffy cheeks um, and you do that with both sides so let's go ahead and give that a shot since this involves so much you know, I guess uh, the word would be thinking on the fly. Um, you're going to have to forgive me if the, the camera is not in focus. Because there really isn't a step by step here. I'm just, like I said before, I'm making it up as I go. And um, And that's going to give us a nice puffy, puffy cheek. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Start curving it. You have to constantly measure this, these things. Try to get them. This is a bit, you know, specific. I don't know why I decided to do a, a Koopa Troopa, but... When it's not as specific, like if it were an animal or something, I think you'd have a little bit more leeway and it wouldn't have to be as symmetrical. But a Koopa, Troopa, a Koopa Troopa is, I guess, similar to doing a person and uh, in the sense that it has a face. And when you're looking at it from above like that, you just want to try to make sure that it's a, you know, that it's just as symmetrical as possible and try to make sure that it keeps its bend even though it's going to change constantly because we're going to add things and remove things And there we go, now we have the puffy cheeks. I think something we could do without fail is start to uh, put the neck. So the neck is going to go around the bottom here. And that's just a circular piece that you're going to wrap around. And again, you could just bend uh, this little piece and add a dab. And we want to do this whole neck. Um, eventually it could hide in the shell. But for right now, let's just do it and it's just going to give us more and more building blocks. Okay, that, that piece that I just put on is too small. So I'm going to do that again with a bigger piece.
neck is very thin. Make sure that these things stay flush so they don't bother us later. So try to flatten it just as much as you can. I'm going to do that a few more times around the neck and then I'll come back. Alright, I've applied three rings around the neck, but it's a little bit loose, so I'm just going to fasten it by putting some pressure, and I'm going to put three dabs of glue here, and I'm just going to put a strip, one of the leftover strips, and I'm going to glue all of that together, and hopefully that will fasten it in place and stop all of those uh, neck rings from moving as much, and it will. Um, what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach a piece from here to here, just one solid piece. Um, and that's going to make up the back of the head. So you guys can see how, you know, we're just wireframing this pretty much and um, putting our, our Koopa Troopa together. Um, some artists would take that first cardboard skeleton and they, they would fill it with something instead of uh, filling it with paint instead of um, doing it the way we're doing it they would fill this with paper and then they would put something on top of that to to mold or whatever it is that they have to do um, technique that it's a, it's a technique that also works but it's more expensive and I think this is good to learn that way you could kind of get the hang of it because this technique can be used with not just paper, you can use it with metal if you can bend metal. Um, you can't really use it with wood, but instead of using cardboard, we could use wood and that would make it much, much more strong. Much stronger. And now we kind of have uh, at least a building block for the back of the head. Um, we don't have a top view, but I think that looks pretty good. So this doesn't flop around, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here as well. I think this is going to take you guys quite a while, um, but then again, you keep surprising me with how fast you complete things, so maybe not. Okay, Thanks so far so good. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to glue this piece. We never glued it. And try to be gentle with this. And just put a little bit of glue there. And then hold it flat. Okay. Um, I was thinking that maybe there's going to be a problem with the eyes. But I don't see anything really saying that the eyes are going, you know, are dipping into the... I don't know, the center here. Um, it is a cartoon after all, but you would assume that if the eyes were round, they would kind of dip into the center a bit. But they don't, so let's just keep moving. Um, I'm thinking maybe this is going to be the next one, but maybe not. I don't like that. I don't like that. I can't really tell. So I am going to make them turn a bit. Same thing, the same technique that we used for the for the puffy cheek. I'm going to use it here for the eye. And I'm just going to make those eyes bulge just a little bit. So they feel more round.
the same thing for the other side. Again, you want to co compare this so it looks somewhat symmetrical. You don't want one eye to be bulging more than the other. That's really hard to do though, I mean, to keep them the same. So, you know, just be very careful. And if it doesn't come out that way, then not a big deal. We are learning here after all, learning together. So now you have the beginnings of the eye. I'm just trying to think if maybe the next option is to do this, but to do it vertically. All right. I'm gonna prepare something for the eye and I'm gonna prepare it and I'm gonna come back, I'll show you. All right, moving on. I'm just gonna continue to, you know, add the back by adding a piece here and you don't need too much guidance so what we're going to do is we're slowly going to add pieces until all of the back here is you know covered and as a matter of fact that's what i'm going to do i'm going to do that off camera now and i'm just going to keep adding pieces like here 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 all the way up to this curve and i'm going to do that off camera and i'll be back and I may even add one here like this. All right. So I added this piece. And I've added this piece. Now I'm going to add another piece here. The beds can get a little bit tricky, but I'm going to keep adding pieces like this until I can solidify this thing. And then when the time is right, um, I'm going to start adding some pieces like this. Just creating a grid. Maybe the time is right now. So yeah, I'm going to add one here, one here, and one there. All right, so I added the one in the center. Now from this, which is the back of the back of the eye, I'm going to attach one and I'm going to add it all the way over here to below the neck. And then I'm going to try to do the same thing on the other side. And you see that it starts to create a grid and that's what you want. It's going to give it strength and it's, and once we do paper mache or whatever we decide to do, um, it's going to have somewhere to go. They're going to have somewhere to put it. Another thing you could do is you could just fill up that gap with with uh, newspaper so it's much stronger that way and maybe we'll do that I don't know I haven't decided but I'm gonna right now I'm just gonna do the other side here all right once you do add the uh, piece like this you have to be mindful if it's got a bend so this one does so I did bend the paper on both sides to give it the illusion of that bend there. I'm gonna add this.
I decided that we are going to stuff that area with paper. Uh, let's be smart about this. So we have, we'll have many projects to do. So instead of trying to just solidify this with the grid, which um, the mask that I'm doing in class, we can't really do that. Not at the stage where it is right now because you need to be able to get in there so it can't have paper inside of it. Um, but I'm going to grid this whole thing up just like I did here in the back and then I'm going to stuff it with paper and then and then we'll probably just paper mache it and paint it. Well we're going to put uh, tape on top of it so if you haven't gotten your tape yet I recommend you go get a tape. Go, go get some uh, painters tape. But go to the dollar store get something that's affordable or Home Depot don't get the really expensive one yeah so I'm gonna start gridding more and more of this the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grid oh my camera's falling I'm gonna grid right here the back of the eyes all right I was looking at the reference here and in the back it's important to note that the back of the eyes are definitely bulging out the front are not or at least I can't tell if they are they don't look like it because there's not enough shadow so the back is bulging out a bit so we're gonna try to bulge that out uh, just a little bit Try to do the same thing on the other side. Realize that this a little bit is going to be a problem. If I can just cut that out now. Gonna save me some trouble later. So I just cut into it just a little bit. I want to pinch it together. That'll work too. It'll still create that bulge. try to just keep it the same it's getting a bit confusing to see now in the video so I'm trying to create this so it's round continue to grid it there now so I'm gonna add a new piece here to go around there and I'll be back once that's gridded so the back is all gridded up now and I'm gonna stuff paper in there and then I'm gonna put tape on top to smooth it out give it a more smooth finish it won't be perfect and you could take it even further like by applying plaster and things like that we're not gonna take it that far maybe we'll, the, the most we'll do is maybe some paper mache to harden it now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the front and I'm just gonna grid all this up uh, and I'm gonna try to align it with my references as much as I can and uh, once it's gridded I'll come back and I'll start stuffing it with paper newspaper works better than paper that I might have like I just have regular copy paper and that's too stiff but maybe I might use like tissue or something so or napkins I think napkins would work well we'll see uh, um, I'm gonna just go ahead and grid the front off camera and then I'll be back when it's time to put the paper in it yeah, I'm gridding up the front but what I'm starting to realize is that the 
the nose or the beak doesn't come up high enough. So I'm going to add a piece here, something like, like that, just to make it come up a little bit higher. So that's what I'm going to do, something like that. And I'm going to base it, of course, on what I see over there. Maybe I'll make it a little bit wider as well. I think that would be a good idea. So yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, so this part right here is a bit tricky. If you look at your reference, it like bulges out. So what I ended up doing is I just fit it right underneath that. And I'm about to put some glue and squeeze it under there. Now that bulge is up. And then what I'm gonna do after that is I'm just gonna take a piece and extend the beak. Not that much, just a little bit based on the on the reference. Remember once I've only extended it a little bit here. Once you do that, you wanna keep the beak sharp. So, cut it on two ends. Kind of like that. So it'll keep it sharp. And I'm just gonna keep on gritting here. I'm gonna create a gap here so it feels a bit more natural. The eyes have a lid. We can add that on later after we add the tape. So don't concern yourself too much with that right now. I think the overall shape is looking pretty good and then we could add some more details later and some, some finishing stages or some later stages. Okay, I've got it to this stage and I've run into some difficulty so I'm going to start using uh, some napkins to, to fill the gaps and hopefully that's going to let me shape areas like right here below the eye and I think it is and I think it's going to work well. So that's what that's where we're headed next. So I'll just take pieces of newspaper or whatever it is you have and let's just start filling up this this space. It's going to pop out some places and that's fine. You know, we could cut that later. And just fill it up. All right, I'm gonna fill it up. This eye is filling up really nicely. Um, some areas you have to stuff a little bit tighter than others. So just keep that in mind. So the eyes filled up really nicely. Um, I need to put a bit more gritting here on the beak because the gaps are too big. So I'm gonna do that. Actually, let's do that right now. It's too soon for you guys to do something like this. Oh, well, I guess we'll find out in class. All right, I'm gonna add a bit more gritting to the beak, off camera. All right, so I've added plenty more gritting to the front and um, starting to look good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stuff the whole thing with napkins and then I'm gonna put a layer of tape on top of that and I think that'll be enough for one day so again I'm gonna go ahead and stuff the napkins off camera okay all the gritting is done I've stuffed this with uh, napkins in my case for you it'll probably be newspaper and now the next step is just to layer it with tape 
and I think it's going to look much more solid. It's going to look pretty good. Uh, beyond that, there are still things we can do, but I'm going to stop it with the tape. Uh, we'll leave the details for part two, where we'll just put some details on this and then uh, think about doing the body. But yeah, and that's in part two after you guys finish this. I assume it'll take you at least two days to do this if it's not too difficult. So I'm gonna see if I have some tape here at home and if I do I'm gonna put some tape on it. If not then I'll leave the tape for part two as well. So I found some tape and um, pretty self-explanatory. So we're just gonna you know, cover this with a few layers of tape. You don't want to use clear tape. It's not going to work very well. So again, there's no point in me doing that on camera. It's just going to take forever. And I haven't even started to edit this video yet. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll come back when it's all done. That's definitely going to hold it all together. And it would even allow us to paint it at that stage. So. I'll see you when it's more completed. Okay, so I just finished taping it up and the shape looks right. Um, still no detail in it, but let's see how you guys do with that. We're gonna give that a shot, depending on how, on how it goes, we'll continue. Either way, I'm gonna continue doing this thing. Um, but definitely the shape is right. It's much better than the, the one I had done in class. I think the, the shape is much more accurate since I used the reference. And uh, that's it. You, there's no way you guys are going to do this in one class. Maybe two or three. So let's see how that goes. I'll bring this to class so you can have a better look.